Crawlers. Oh, I'm good. Oh, let's see. Good, good, good. I'm trying a new setup here. Let's try to see if. Oh, it looks fine. Right? So today, you know, I'm trying the new set, this new setup. I made a new office. I moved to a new house. There's this little room. It really can't be used for anything <laughs> besides an office. So I got my stuff. It's kind of cool. I know, but I wish I could put the camera like in front of me. I don't know. Really how to do that. I don't know how these YouTubers figure this shit out. Why is this about to tip over? <laughs> Fuck, you know what? I'm just gonna not fuck with it. Ugh. The only thing I need. Get a little gaming monitor, see that? Yeah, got one of these fuckers. So if I put a little gaming monitor up here in between my calls, got the Xbox Series X. Play men. If you want to play me in Madden, let me know. I'm pretty damn good. So this is the new setup. Work it out. I don't really know what to do. Sorry. Right. But anyway, I'm going to do um, biceps training tips. Got to get it. I play Call of Duty too. <laughs> of course I play Call of Duty. Um, yeah, I'm pretty good at that too. <laughs> I'm pretty good at that. One of these days. Um, one of these days I'll post my Xbox Xbox Live name and you guys wanna give it a go at Call of Duty. I'm warning you. I'm warning you. You know, honestly, I set up bicep training tips today and I had something in mind that I was gonna go over. But what I decided to do is just take questions on biceps training. Because I spent the last hour and a half putting together a grill. And I forgot what the fuck I was going to talk about. So if you guys have biceps training questions, there is some, some research posted by, what's his name? Chris Beardsley. I'm going to bring that up. It's funny because... Uh, no. Let me find him. Let me find him. So Chris Beersley is an exercise researcher. I follow him. I follow him on Instagram. I don't really know much about him, but he does post a lot of cool shit. So, so he posted this. He posted this. Um. The biceps breaking moment arm lengths are longer when the wrist is supinated, although only in the middle of the elbow joint angle range of motion. This means that we can therefore target the biceps brachii with a supinated grip biceps curl and the brachial radialis with a pronated grip biceps curl. Um, you know, this guy says, I think this is not something new. It's kind of true. But um, 
based on, oh, so this isn't even his research, research honestly. But here's the thing, guys. It, it, <laughs> there are some critics of my exercise recommendations that say what, what I recommend is from old research. Keep in mind what I recommend is from research as early and recent as 2017. So some of the research that I cite is from the 90s. Sure. But look at this. Chris Beardsley is referencing research from 1995. Nobody's got a problem with that. You know, just because we've known something for a long time does not mean it's false. We've known the earth was round for thousands of years. Just because we've known this for a long time doesn't mean the earth is no longer round. So when you're training the biceps, it's a very good idea to avoid neutral grip, pronated grip. Because the function of the brachialis and the brachioradialis is literally to turn your palm down. Although it does attach very close to the elbow, it is an elbow flexor. Its primary function, since it crosses the elbow joint like this, its primary function is pronation. The biceps, however, is the strongest elbow flexor. It attaches further down the elbow, about here. You can literally feel the tendon where the biceps attach. They come together like this. Attach here. The bicep, the elbow, the strong elbow flexor is the biceps, and you can tell as I turn my wrist in, the biceps begin to shorten. So if you want to work the biceps harder, you want somewhat of a supinated grip. A lot of the times you don't want a fully supinated grip because that is not going to accommodate most people's carrying angle. So how to tell? What, um, how to tell if you could use a fully supinated grip? Like for most people, you can't use a straight bar. And you'll notice if you go to use a straight bar and do curls with it, it's going to feel really uncomfortable. You're going to notice your shoulder joint is going to start like twisting up. This is because of your carrying angle. So this is how you test your carrying angle. You stand up, put your hands by your side, Twist your hands out all the way, and then see the distance you have between your hand and your head. Notice how I have a big distance. I have a very wide carrying angle. So you stand here, turn your hands out. How far are your hands? If your hands are far from your legs, you are going to have a very hard time doing a straight bar supinated curl. You're also going to have a very hard time doing a fully supinated pull down. You're just not going to be able to. Now, if you turn your hands out and they're right here, you're going to be able to do straight bar supinated, fully supinated curls and pull downs all day. It all depends on your carrying angle. Most of you are going to be somewhere in the middle. Mine, kind of wide. I can't do a, a straight bar pull down. I can't do a straight bar curl. So although he recommends supination, what I recommend is not being fully supinated, but partially. Somewhere between neutral and full supination is going to accommodate your carrying angle and um, put your, your biceps in a position where it can contract harder. Also, So what, what machines do this? Well, you notice a lot of the times the, the curl machines are in a position like this. They're not fully supinated, they're not neutral. They're somewhere in the middle to accommodate the carrying angle. An easy bar curl like this to accommodate the carrying angle. Now where Mike Mencher was super, yeah. So, so would easy bar be superior to a straight bar if you have a wider carrying angle. If you have a super narrow carrying angle like this, just stand here, turn your wrist, your hands up. Where do they go? If you can do this comfortably, if you have to do this to be comfortable, you're not gonna be using a straight bar. If you can do this and be comfortable, you can use a straight bar. They're not necessarily superior or inferior. 
it's based on the um, the anatomy of your joints, really. So um, the easy bar curl is good. Most curl machines are good. You know what else you can do? You just take a set of dumbbells. Hold on one second. I'll grab some dumbbells. So, So what you want to do, you could also do this. This is my preferred, my preferred curl. Grab some dumbbells, slightly supinate them. Don't try to turn them out like this. Hands by your side. Go from neutral, slightly supinate, like this. See how they're slightly bent? This is going to accommodate the carrying angle very well. I feel like this is the best way to do curls. Honestly, the, um, it's unilateral or bilateral. It accommodates the carrying angle. The strength curve and resistance curve is damn near perfect. So consider, I'll do it this way. When I'm at zero moment arm, I, I, so this is the moment arm. The moment arm is the distance between the axis of rotation and the load. This is the moment arm. It is the longest right here. It is the shortest right here. There is no moment arm. There's no distance between the load and the axis of rotation. Conveniently, this is in a position where my biceps is in passive insufficiency, where it's weak. So the reason a dumbbell curl is so perfect is because we're getting no resistance in a position where the biceps is weak. We're getting increasing resistance towards the position where the biceps is the strongest. The biceps is the strongest somewhere at about 90 degrees of elbow flexion. And this is where the moment arm is the longest. And then again, when we pass that position, notice the moment arm is shortening again. So the resistance is reducing again as we reach full contraction where the biceps gets weak again. So the resistance curve, my left arm feels like shit. The resistance curve is perfectly, almost perfect, perfectly congruent with the, with the uh, muscle torque production curve of the curl. That is why there is, there's really no need to do any other biceps exercises unless you just feel like it. The free weight, damn near perfect for that reason. Here's another thing about the free weight. A machine has friction. A machine has guide rods. This, no friction. This is a huge advantage to free weights is no friction. So in many cases, you, pro you probably don't really need any sort of fancy biceps exercise. Now, so that's a, that's a huge training tip. Carrying angle, slightly supinate. Free weights and barbells provide almost a perfect resistance curve and they're frictionless. I mean, that's kind of, I mean, it's nice, you know, sometimes to do uh, a curl. Yeah, so the only, the only advantage of a biceps machine is convenience. Yeah. Also, maybe since you are bracing yourself, you're, you're reducing the amount of effort required to stabilize. Contrary to popular but misinformed belief, you do not want to add a stabilization challenge to your exercise. So an advantage a preacher curl machine has 
is you can brace yourself on the machine and avoid stabilizing so you can focus on the targeted muscle group. So for instance, if I'm doing a curl, whatever, one hand, two hand, whatever, I'm doing a curl, I have to stabilize. My hamstrings, my glutes, my abdominals, my shoulders, everything has to put in a little bit of effort to keep me upright. This is not necessarily a good thing. So if I'm standing here doing a curl and my muscles are working to keep me upright, my abdominals are working, right? My glutes are working. My hamstrings are working. My shoulders are working. But does this exercise train my glutes, my hamstrings, my abdominals, and my shoulders? Would you do this exercise for the sake of training your glutes, your hamstrings, your shoulders, and your abdominals, and your lower back? No. Just because those muscles are involved in stabilization does not mean they are effectively worked. This is why stabilization is a myth. You do not need or want to add stabilization challenges to your exercise because it's going to involve other muscle groups, but it's not going to require enough effort out of them to stimulate them. <clears throat> How about the pull-up bar? How wide would you put your hands? See, that's the... Um, so the pull-up bar, obviously, if you're doing a pronated grip pull-up, it's going to be more comfortable. The problem is, remember, we're pronated. The muscles involved with pronation, brachialis and brachioradialis. So the muscles that are going to be performing flexion on your pronated pull-up is not going to be much of your biceps. It's going to be your brachialis and brachioradialis. They are way weaker elbow flexors. They're smaller, and they attach closer to the elbow. So a lot of the times when you're doing a pronated pull-up, you might be working <laughs> your – you might be failing – your brachialis and brachioradialis might be failing before you get adequate stimulation for your lats. That's the problem with the pronated pull-up. Now, if you now a supinated pull-up, most people don't have the joint structure or the carrying angle to comfortably do a fully supinated chin-up. So what do you do? What you do is you'll, you'll want to get some of those nylon handles and hook them to the ball. So you can twist the handles around and kind of put them where you want them. So you want to get handles like this. I'll show you. Nylon jam handles. So if you're going to be doing a chin up or a pull up, you're probably going to want to get these to use. Something like this. Right, because if you have something like this, you can hook it to the bar one way or another. You know, you might have to get creative with it. You can hook it to the bar, and then you can move your wrist around to supinate however much is comfortable. So that way, you can do a slightly supinated chin up without having to do fully pronated or fully supinated. So, uh, with a pull up bar, chin up bar, you're going to want to find a way to attach attach these. Um, Plenty of ways you can do it. Like this. There you go. Boom. Can't beat that. Look at that. That's literally exactly what you want. So if you're going to be doing a chin-up, on a chin-up bar, pull-up bar, you're going to want these so that way you can slightly supinate your grip. <sighs> Remember, guys, um, the home workout still free with Golden Era Systems. So if you haven't tried Golden Era System, I don't know if you guys saw all the uh, – testimonials i post like a new one every day people are there there have been people saying this system keep in mind people are doing this on their own with no experience they're saying it's like magic in terms of results now imagine how much better results are if i coach you these are people doing it on their own and their results are super good their, their results are insane so if you haven't tried golden era system yet you are you're nuts <laughs> like you're nuts you're missing out on the best results you'll ever have 
Plus, you get the home workout free. Could also do rings to find your trigger. Yep, totally could. Or gym rings. Yep, gym rings is good. Yeah, I mean, you know, the only the only problem I would have with a gym ring is if you're curving, if you're if you're gripping something curved, a lot of the tension is going to be on these fingers. And you're not going to have much tension on these fingers. Which means you're going to be you're going to be putting a lot of pressure on just two fingers because it's curved. Now, if it's flat, you can evenly distribute that tension across all your fingers. On the gym ring, you'll probably feel like your grip is going to fail sooner than if you had a regular flat handle. They're fine, but that might be a problem. Now, let's see how to get over plateaus, especially on compounds like a lat pull down. Well, here's the thing. When people are having a plateau, the first thing I ask them is, how long have you been training? What type of gym equipment are you using? If you've been training for three, four, five, six months, you're not going to increase in strength as rapidly as you did the first one or two. It's just normal. You're going to increase rapidly in the beginning, and it's going to slow down. You're not hitting a plateau. These are, this is normal progress. And the reason people think they're hitting a plateau is because you get so strong so quickly in the beginning, then when it starts to slow down, you think you're hitting a plateau. You're not. This is just normal progress. So my advice for getting over a plateau is you didn't hit a plateau. Progress from strength training is slow. Not so much in the beginning, but as time goes on, it's very slow. You need to accept this. Um, you were, you're not at a plateau. Your body is just going to respond little by little by little by little over time. All right. Plus, if you're using, if you're using um, regular gym equipment, say you're using 100 pounds and your, your target rep range is 12. In this workout, you get 13. Most gym equipment only allows you to raise the weight by 10 or 15 pounds. So your option is go from 100 to 110. Meanwhile, that may be too much of an increase for you. You may need to go from 100 to 102. So you go from 100 to 110 and your reps go from 13 to 5. And then you're like, what the fuck do I do? I can't raise weight because if I raise weight, my reps go way down. That's because you may not be getting strong enough for that much of an increase in weight. Make sense? No shoulder presses on BOSU balls? Nope. Dude, it was so funny. A couple days ago, I was in the gym, and I was kind of, I was at the front desk, and I just took a glance around. One guy's on the ground doing this. One old guy is walking across the monkey bar thing like this on his tiptoes. The other guy has a pole and he's doing ab rollouts with a pole. And this is all going on in the same area. And I'm like, this is a fucking circus. It's so weird. <laughs> I don't know how these people come up with this shit. Oh, whatever. All right, are wide grip curls Geronda style or close grip curls a good choice? Shoulder width. You don't want to go wider than your shoulder. You don't want to go more narrow. You want to accommodate the carrying angle. Going wider doesn't work the muscle any different. Going narrow doesn't work the muscle any different. Golden is great. Best results I ever got working out. Yes, thank you. It, it is. It is. If you haven't gone to goldenairsystem.com and tried this program yet, you're missing out on the fastest, best results you will ever have training, hands down. This is early, guys. This is early. Within five years, everybody will be training this way. Mark my words. Everybody. Because you cannot do this program and not see results. If you did this program like complete shit, you would still see results. That's how good it is because it's based on physiology. So if you haven't gotten good results in the gym or you just want better results, get this program. 
All right, let's see. If easy bars are better for some, should one use a narrow wide grip when holding easy bar? Um, just shoulder width. Just aim for as close to shoulder width as you can. That's, that's all you need to know. All right, thoughts on body weight exercises like push-ups, chin-ups, and squats using your principles. Yeah, super good. My home workout program, free with the Golden Era system, demonstrates and explains all these exercises using my principles. Or that they're not my principles, using these principles. I got to stop calling them my principles because they're not mine by any means. What would the range of motion be for? Depends on the, it depends on the exercise, but that is also demonstrated and explained in Golden Era system. So go ahead and grab it and I'll show you exactly how to do it. All right, let's see. Do you see any benefit with regular versus incline versus a short position curl? I think for some people, this can help produce more mechanical tension and stress. I think if you are very good at training hard to failure, not going to have any additional benefit. I've experimented with it for like the last year. But if you're an individual who, if your arms are not growing or responding very well, you may for some reason or another not be training them as hard as you could. So working the biceps in the shortened or the lengthened position could help. I'm not going to say it's 100% going to help, but there is there is something there for people who, who just can't contract hard enough. So, but if you're training really, really hard to failure, training in the shortened and lengthened position, not going to do a damn thing. I've experimented with it for the last year. Doesn't, if you're training hard, doesn't do anything. But if you have lagging arms, there's something going on with your intensity effort, in which case it will probably help. Okay. All right, with the Golden Era Advanced Arm System at eight exercises for upper body, is it safe to assume a split routine when implementing this system? Well, remember the advanced arms, you don't do all those exercises. I should probably, I don't know if I had a video explaining that. So the way you want to program the exercises in the advanced arms is choose one or two. So maybe two of those exercises for the biceps, two for the triceps. You don't want to do all of them. Keep that in mind. That would be overtraining. Let's see. You said at one point you do leg press, leg extension, and leg curl for legs. Yeah, usually. Well, if I'm going to do a leg press or a squat, that's the only leg exercise I do besides calves. I don't combine leg press or squat with extension and uh, leg curls. Can't handle it. If you do leg press one set to failure, won't it be too much? Yeah, it is. For me, for sure. But again, you need, you know, we got to look at how hard are you training? How much muscle do you have? What's your fiber type distribution? You know, how hard are you pushing? For me, all those exercises are too much. Everybody I trained in my studios, I did all of those exercises. They just, because most people aren't going to train, you know, as hard as me. So for me, one workout. So what I normally do with my upper body workout, I'll do a curl and a leg extension with my upper body. I'll wait a few days. I'll go back to the gym. I'll do just a squat and heel raise, maybe forearms too. That's it. All right, what are your thoughts on compound barbell versus compound machine exercise? I imagine you prefer machines to reduce the element of stability and increase safety. Yeah. In terms of results, exactly the same. All, all the research, and it's, you don't even need research to understand. First, we had the barbell. Then there were problems with the barbell. Bad resistance curves, instability, safety issues, um, things like that. The machines were invented to fix the problems the barbells had. That's it. You know, people wanted to bench press, but if you didn't have a spotter, you might crush yourself and die. So what did they do? They made a machine that, where you could bench press and not be afraid of crushing yourself and dying. They're the same thing. They're literally the same thing. And the fact that this is still a debate is nuts because there's no difference. Some people think barbell exercises are more effective because you have to stabilize. This is retarded. It's absolutely retarded. 
most people just don't know any better. They've heard someone say before, oh, stabilize, blah, 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 blah. And then they just regurgitate their bullshit. Most trainers are very guilty of this. Most trainers will listen to Huber, Huberman Labs on the way to work and they just regurgitate shit that they heard and then think they know what they're talking about. That's most of the fitness industry. Somebody heard some retard say stabilize and now they tell say stabilize and it's just a mess. Um, but no, you don't need anything for the sake of stabilization. Uh, all right. Heavy breathing causes me to become lightheaded and gives me headaches. Should I still stick to it and breathe normally? You want to breathe openly and freely. You don't really need to breathe heavily. You're probably <laughs> like hyperventilating is where I'm getting a headache. Just want to <sighs> openly calmly, freely. Don't think too much about breathing. When you go jogging, you go out and you jog. Do you think about breathing? No, you just breathe. Breathe while you're training with weights, the same way you would breathe while you're jogging. Don't think about it too much. How much rest between sets? I'm 61 years old and use three minutes. That's under the assumption you need multiple sets. You do not need multiple sets. If you are training to failure, one, maybe two sets, anything more than that, waste your time. That's the answer to that question. Uh, do these principles also count for triceps, like skull crushers? Yes. These principles apply to muscles. Muscles. Train to failure. Why? If you guys go through my YouTube videos, there's one uh, it says, what did I title it? The best word, I, I titled it like Greg Doucette is wrong about training, whatever. And I go over the principles. The principles are train to failure. Why? Training to failure activates the most motor units and thereby stimulates the most muscle for growth. Move slowly, why? Moving slowly keeps the muscle under continuous load and reduces peak force generation, which reduces chance of injury. Adjust volume and frequency according to your ability to adapt and recover while accommodating high intensity. That's it. That's all the principles are. All right. Are we supposed to feel that lactic acid burn with proper intensity of effort? Yes. After going to failure... Yes. So you'll notice some muscle groups burn more than others. This is due to more sensory nerves um, in those areas. Some areas will be more sensitive to lactic acid. You ever notice when you do your triceps, they don't burn at all? Your lats never burn. Your traps never burn. Your rhomboids never burn. Your rear delts never burn. Your medial delts burn. Your front delts burn. Your biceps burn. Your legs burn, your calves burn. So some muscle groups will have more of these sensory nerves that are sensitive to lactic acid and they will burn. So don't worry too much about the burning. Suckerberg. <laughs> you're lucky you didn't get booted off of fucking YouTube. What's your opinion on sticking to the same exercises every workout and improving on them specifically or rather mixing it up? 100% stick to the same exercises. You know, I just recorded a video and sent it to editing on this today. How do you choose an exercise? There are three things you want to look at. One, does this exercise address muscle and joint function? For instance, I want to train my chest. Does the exercise accommodate humeral adduction? Let's see. Converging chest press. Yes. Peck fly. Yes. Push up. Kind of. Choose an exercise that accommodates muscle and joint function. I want to train my chest. I choose a burpee. Does a burpee train the targeted muscle in accordance to muscle and joint function? No. No, not at all. What's a burpee train? Fucking nothing. Trains your camera. So when choosing an exercise one, does it does it um Address the target muscle group in accordance to muscle and joint function. Number two, is it safe? Number three, is it efficient? Okay, so let's explore. How do we choose an exercise for the chest? All right. Or the biceps. Let's choose the biceps. All right, 
the functions of the biceps, palm supination, elbow flexion, shoulder flexion, okay? Now, let's say we choose, we're gonna choose a one-arm dumbbell curl, okay? Number one, does a one-arm dumbbell curl accommodate the muscle joint function of the biceps? Yes. Is it safe? Yes. Is it efficient? Eh, no. Why? Because we're training one arm at a time. Let's look at a uh, easy bar biceps curl. Does it accommodate muscle joint function? Yes. Is it safe? Yes. Is it efficient? Ding, ding, ding. Yes. Why? Because it's training both of them. A burpee. A burpee. Ready? Here's a burpee. My dog's going to get scared. That's a burpee. Does this burpee address the targeted muscle group in accordance with muscle joint function? No. What muscle group? Is it safe? No. Hopping around like a fucking idiot. Is it efficient? No. Why? Because it, it uses a bunch of muscle, but it doesn't train any of them. All right? So that's how you choose an exercise. And once you've chosen the best option, there's no reason to ever change it. Mixing things up is a myth. And the reason people think you have to confuse your muscles or mix things up is because when you do a new exercise, there is more damage that occurs. This damage becomes sensitive to pain receptors over time, the pain receptors become less sensitive to the damage of that movement and the exercise does not become sore anymore. So when you're choosing a new exercise, the pain receptors for that particular movement are very sensitive to the damage caused by that movement and you get sore. But over time, you don't get sore because the pain, uh, the pain receptors get less sensitive. People think that soreness is an indication of an effective workout. That's why they keep changing their exercises. They get sore. They think it's effective. And thereby, they come up with this ridiculous wrong conclusion that you need to constantly change your exercises because it makes you sore and soreness means it's effective. No. Wrong, 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 wrong. Wrong beyond belief. All right, let's see. Does the hammer strength machine preacher curl have a good strength curve? Yeah, it's decent. Can the machine pull over? Replace the lat pull down and horizontal row both together. Nah. The pullover is not going, it, it, you don't retract your scapula on the pullover. Look. With a row, you retract the scapula. Pull down, retract the scapula. Pull over, not so much. You're going to need some kind of scapular retraction movement for the rhomboids and the trapezius. So the pullover does not replace all of them. Let's see. Yeah, that's an interesting one. Um, I've got till 2.30, I've got, right? Yeah, 2.30, I've got to go. Do you think there could be any substantial benefit to omni-contraction training? E.g. for an exercise like easy bar curl, pausing the negative at three different stages? No. Nope. Nah. I mean, you could, but it's not going to, if you just wanted to do it, go for it. But is it going to result in any additional benefit? Yeah. You know, Mensa advocated it, but that was 30, 40 years ago. We've learned a lot since then. The principles Jay is talking about apply to the human body. Yes. Soreness in one side of my body more than one. My right leg is always way more sore than my left after bilateral exercise. For some reason, genetically, you you just your pain receptors might be more sensitive on one side. Fucking weird, I know. I know. Oh, I think I sent my grad paper to your email. Oh, um, send it to jvincentfitness at gmail.com. For some reason, the past couple days, I had hundreds of spam. I don't know what the hell happened. Gmail just went nuts, and I was deleting tons of spam. I might have deleted it. Send it again. Uh, best one way to send you a donation, just, uh, I don't know, PayPal, JV. Uh, I don't know, just 
If you want to donate something to me, just send it to uh, PayPal. There's the address. Uh, let's see. Excellent exercise evaluation, engineering, applied data science. Yep. All right, a couple more. Yeah, so Cody, send it to that email address. I'll keep an eye out for it. Um, I might have deleted it because I went through deleting tons and tons of spam. I don't know what is going on with Gmail, but I got spammed out. See, thoughts on doing one to two exercises a day, six times a week, alternating push pull leg. Mm, you could. But remember, principle number three is it efficient? That's not efficient. But if you want to do it that way, sure, you could. You could if you wanted to train more often. I mean, the thing is, when you start to overtrain, you're going to know it. <laughs> you're going to know it. You're going to feel like trash when you start to overtrain. So, you know, the question is, am I overtraining? Well, do you feel like shit? No? Then you're not. Pretty simple. Like, for instance, I did my, uh, my workout a couple days ago. I couldn't even demonstrate curling that dumbbell with my left arm. It was achy. It feels terrible. That's how you know you're overtraining. So training each bicep separately isn't as effective as training them at the same time. It's as effective, it's less efficient. It's literally like going and washing the right side of your car, drying it, and then washing the left side of your car and drying it. Would you wash your car like that? No. So why would you train your biceps like that? Why would you train one side of your biceps and then the other side when you just train them both? It's literally that simple. You can train one at a time. It's just as effective, of course, just less efficient. I mean, if you want to spend more time in the gym, sure. You know, if you don't want to go home to your wife. <laughs> My left leg is significantly weaker, tested by dynamometer. Should I do more unilateral work? No. I would train them with both equal intensity, equal frequency, equal volume. Let them even out. My question, my question would be how long you've been training. If you've been training for two years and it's significantly weaker, you'd have to take a different approach. But if you've been training for just a couple of months and it's only a little bit weaker, don't worry about it. <laughs> I have the old school solo flex. Is this good to use for the program? No. Now, when I grew up, my father had a solo flex. That thing's a piece of trash. Trash. All right. A couple more. I got three minutes. We don't have a pullover machine in our gym, unfortunately. So I'm, so I'm down lap pullovers. How to do efficiently without using momentum. Um, let's see. Just look at my YouTube channel. I got all these. I got videos of all this shit. Let me, let me see. I mean, you guys will probably have to go kind of deep into my YouTube channel and see some of this stuff. But it, I mean, let's see, pull down. I mean, what's the. Oh, yeah, here's one. Here, I'll copy the link and put it in. So here's a video demonstrating the pull down. We can play it. Hold on. And pop the sucker up. Uh, shit. Add. Hold on. Um... Okay. Dude, no. It's not the right video. This is... So here's how you do a pull down. The proper performance. I mean, here I'm doing the supinated thing. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing it like this. A lat pull down using a traditional cable machine and a traditional. And this has a voiceover demonstration to hold the contraction. Notice. Take your time coming up. Notice how the rest of my body is just fixed. Nothing's moving. Unlike By the way, look how jacked my legs are. Just wanted to say. Pronated wide. Jay Vincent never shows his legs. Well, I don't want you guys to see my fucking balls, all right? So I'm not posting pictures in my boxes. 
Your biceps are in a position to My legs are huge, by the way. more contractile force. So this is how you do a pull down. This just will allow for deeper inroads in the latissimus. You want to focus on changing direction slowly at the top. Notice right here, I'm pulling as hard as I possibly can. Holding the contraction. Symmetric easing contraction. out of the contraction, just like that. So I put the link in the, in the chat here. Let's see. All right, opinions on the Matrix are on curl. Not a big fan of Matrix, but it's all good at the moment. Just wanna... Yeah, it's fine. Uh, L, uh, the Life Fitness, Matrix, Arm Curl, they're all pretty much fine. <laughs> Except for one. Advice for getting mass on chest, goldenerasystem.com. <laughs> That's my advice for getting mass on chest. Dude, just try the program. You'll put mass on, trust me. Opinions, Matrix Arm Curl. Matrix, matrix Arm Curl, fine. Life Fitness, fine. Um, Cybex, fine. Pretty, they're all pretty much fine. There is one, however, which is fucking horrible. Nautilus Impact Arm Curl is the worst arm curl machine I've ever used in my life. And you might be thinking, but it's a Nautilus. A Nautilus. No, it's not. This here is the worst arm curl ever made. No, it's a leg curl. Where is it? This. Nautilus Impact is actually sport track equipment with a different logo on it. Where is it? Or Star Trek. Where is it? No, wait, is it Sport Trek or Star Trek? Oh, Nautilus Star Trek. See, see, it's the same shit. All right. Star Trek. Put the Nautilus logo on their shit. Oh, where is it? All right. It's Nautilus Inspiration. Yeah. Nautilus Inspiration, Nautilus Impact. Where is this thing? Anyway, so this Star Trek Inspiration, Star Trek, ready? Inspiration, this equipment, okay, is the worst shit on the face of this earth. I'm not seeing much of it, but it looks like this. Oh, let me just hit images. All right, it looks like this. Star Trek inspiration, right? So check, this. see this machine? Now look at <laughs> this. It's the same fucking thing. Nautilus inspiration, Star Trek inspiration are the same exact piece of equipment. Star Trek is the worst equipment ever made. So the Nautilus Inspiration arm curl is by far the worst arm curl machine I've ever used in my life. It's this thing. So here's the, here is the uh, Nautilus Inspiration arm curl. Okay. Now we're gonna go and we're gonna do St Star Trek Inspiration arm curl. And you'll quite notice they're the same fucking thing. Oh, well, that's the Nautilus. Hold on. Same thing. So these are the worst. I don't know why Nautilus is on this piece of equipment, but the Star Trek Inspiration Arm Curl, see that, is the exact same as the Nautilus Inspiration Arm Curl. Oh, well, that's a different one. So they're all pretty much fine, except for that. That's just so bad. That equipment, if you walk into a gym and it has Star Trek or Nautilus Inspiration, just go somewhere else. Trust me. All right. Let's see. Johnny T, you've seen amazing results from your system. Great program. Yep. If you guys haven't tried it, you get the homework out for free, goldenerasystem.com. 
you know, I knew we were going to see really good results from this because I've trained people in person for eight years doing this in my studios that I own personally. And then I released it online and the results are nuts. They're nuts. I knew they'd be good, but I didn't think they'd be this good. Are you a fan of the hammer strength high row? I'm a fan of every hammer strength equipment. Everyone. Dawson, got a question. What can I do instead of leg extension? Should I use knees over toes? Well, you don't really need a leg extension. If you're doing a squat or a leg press, you probably don't need a leg extension. All right, let's see. Thoughts on Doug McGuff's theory of contraction volume leading to hypertrophy in his YouTube video called Six-Way Split, flying under the recovery radar. Um, well, it's incorrect because from the research I read, um, the amount of concentric contractions performed makes no difference. So I don't know that I get people ask me about that video a lot. I should email them and ask them what that video is about because it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense at all. Matt Green. All right. Oh shit, I'm late. All right, guys. I gotta hop off now. Um goldenairsystem.com. Home workout for free, guys. If you have not tried this system, you're wasting your time in the gym. It, literally. Like you will grow and get stronger literally instantly. That's what I've seen from the testimonials. People email me and message me all the time. You get instant results. I might just call it, I usually say fast results, but it's pretty much instant. So if you haven't tried it yet, rather than waiting for the live streams going through my content, just get the system. It's 47 bucks. You get the home workout for free and you'll see instant results. All right. And then hit like, subscribe, follow, share, whatever. I got a new video coming out tomorrow which is going to be titled The Three Dumbest Exercises. <laughs> and they're, they're dumb. All right. So keep an eye out for that. Um, check out my Twitter, underscore J underscore Vincent. It's growing a lot for, or not Twitter, TikTok. It's growing a lot for some weird reason. And um, I'll see you guys in a couple of days. Adios.